Welcome back to Wiznos Tech News and Reviews. Today we'll be talking about how to navigate the Amazfit Bib 5. Because ever since I've released the comprehensive review of this smartwatch slash fitness tracker, I've had a number of questions on how to use certain functions like the monitors, how to set up auto tracking of your activities, how to make the screen light up when you raise your wrist, how to set the brightness, how to switch on Amazon's Alexa, and also, of course, how do we use Bluetooth calls? Well, this video is all about navigating this tracker, the MS Fitbit 5. So without further ado, let's get into this comprehensive navigation overview of the MS Fitbit 5. Firstly, let's take a look at the home screen. So I've got a nice beautiful face here. We can actually switch that around. So by holding your fingertip on top of the dial, you can actually set up your home screen. Well, I've got some Halloween themes there. We're all a bit out of place. It's Christmas time. So let's put on this ginger man. I like this face because it's got the analog clock in the bottom left corner. It's got your digital time, it's got the number of steps, calories burned, and my current heart rate. And of course, I can see my battery left over just at the top of the screen here. And a very nice animation. So if we swipe down from the top screen, we get to shortcut something like you see on your mobile. So you can see your battery, your setting for do not disturb, you can set up your bedtime. Here you set the volume because the watch after all does get a speaker as well as a microphone. There's a second page here. You've got your brightness that you can go to straight away. You can set it up. There's no auto brightness here. So it's just a manual gorge. Now you've also got your settings shortcut. This is very useful, but we'll talk about that slightly later. Now pressing the button on the right hand side will take you one step back or back to home. So for us, it's right here. So if we swipe up from that, we see an actual text or emails. These are your notifications coming down from the bottom. So if you do need to see your texts, your emails, everything will be coming through here. Very useful. So let's swipe down. There we go, we're back to home. Now, if we go to the right, or to the left, it doesn't really matter. It's like a merry-go-round. So if we go back to home and let's swipe our finger to the left, so we're going to the right. This is your daily activity. So we can see 2,385 steps so far, zero activity minutes, and six out of 12 tracked hours, I've been standing up in time because you need to move around. My current heart rate, well, five minutes ago, because I was wearing the watch back then, it was 102 beats per minute. Okay, that's the weather in London right now. As we can see, it's uh, actually quite warm for Christmas. End of December, it's 13 degrees, but it's rainy. You can click on a particular widget to get into the details under it, so into the full app. And here we've got a full breakdown, we've got a weather forecast, all the rest of it. Okay, so by swiping right, you actually go back one screen. So let's keep going. We've got eight pi here. What is pi? Well, pi is your personal activity index. Basically what it does is take a look at all your exercises and the intensity at which you perform them over the past week and puts them together, ranks them into an index. And basically that index says that if your number is above 100 points, that would mean that you have exercised enough. If it's under 100 points for the week, that means that even if you've exercised enough, potentially the exercises have not been at a sufficient intensity and you should push a bit more. So eight is way over under 100, so I should go more. Now, this is where you can set up your music. If you've got it connected to your smartphone, you can play it off here. So let's say you're going for a run, you don't want to pull out your mobile. Well, you can control your songs from this screen. Further to right, we get to the shelves. So this is a very important feature in all the MassFit smartwatches, as of the GTS2 or the GTR2. So what happens here is you've got your 
shelves of sorts. And this is like a merry-go-round, but a shortcut to it or a short version. So up top here, you've got your Amazon's Alexa. You can click on that. Oh, there we go. Alexa, what's the weather in London today? In London, United States, it's five degrees Celsius with fog. Today, you can mm. look for showers with a high of 14 degrees and a low of five degrees. Okay. Well, I think Alexa has got it wrong. I'm not in London, United States. I'm in London, UK. Alexa, what's the weather in London, UK? In London, United Kingdom, it's 12 degrees Celsius with cloudy skies. Today, you can look for rainy weather with a high of 13 degrees. Well, that's Amazon's Alexa for you. Useful? Definitely. It is your AI assistant. And, and the best thing, of course, you can just either read the answers on your screen or because of that speaker here, this one right there, well, it can actually talk back to you. So let's actually ask for a joke. Alexa, can you give me a joke about cars? What does Frankenstein drive? Don't know. A monster truck. Ah, ha, ha. Funny, sort of. Right, anyways, let's keep going. So we can set up our music here, recommendation of sports or widgets to go to, your heart rate, your running. We can see our weather widgets. We can see our pie. So we can step it in from here. Oh, we can actually see the sleep. Yeah, it was Christmas Eve, so didn't get to sleep much last night. So went to sleep at 3.25, woke up at 10.26. We can actually tap in there and have a full breakdown of our sleep. So the score is actually quite good, 82 points. I've got a chart here. So that running red line on top, that's my heart rate. So resting heart rate, while the actual bars here indicate the three sleep stages. So my REM, my light and deep sleep. There we go. So this is very useful. Usually back in the day, you would have to go to your app to check out your sleep metrics in detail. But finally here, we can do it right off the watch case. Let's keep going further down so we can actually see heart rate here. We can go into here. So this is a breakdown of the number of steps. So this is like the general activity which happened over the day as well as the prior day. Quite useful stuff. So you can see, okay, these are your active calories, 115 for the day. Over the day so far, though, I've actually spent 1300 calories. That's based on my weight, my height. So these are my resting calories. These are my active calories. Okay, so let's get out of here. This is 96%. What is this? Well, this is your SpO2 monitor, so your blood oxygen saturation monitor. This is how the watch actually tracks during sleep or during the full day, depending on how you set up in the Zep app, your SpO2 levels. Very handy thing, especially if you're prone to respiratory diseases. And you can go into the settings here and actually add, remove whatever you think is needed to your shortcut screens. So let's go home from the shortcut screen now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swipe left, go to the right. Well, you swipe your finger left, so you go to the right, and we see the gingerbread man again. So we've gone around the screen from top to bottom. We know how that works. Now let's go into the main widgets. So you click or tap on the button on the right, and that takes us to the main screen. So you can get this to look as this. You can see, yep, it's an actual list. But you can set up in settings if you want it to look really cool as an actual grid. So let's go in here. Let's have a look. That will be in your preference menu. You go in here. You go to your app list. Nope, wrong one. List style. So you can either have it as a classic or you can have it as the nine box grid. Personally, I find this slightly more complex to use because, well, I just want to read the name of the app or widget I need, so I prefer this. You've got your heart rate, you've got your blood oxygen, workout history, sleep, phone, music, all the rest of it. 
So you choose what you want to do. Now, very important thing with this tracker is that you can actually download apps from the Zep app. You can download games, calculator, shopping lists. You can find some real good work apps. For example, the Pomodoro tracker, which helps you track your time and improve your time management. I find that very helpful and I've got it on my old GTR 4. So I think what is important here is if we go to the settings. So in settings, you've got your watch face and time, your display settings, sound and vibration, your workout. Let's step in. So here you can actually switch on your auto detection. What do you want to auto recognize? For me, I like to auto -rec recognize my walking um, and potentially outdoor running. So straight away when I start running, it will switch on the GPS and it will accurately calculate my distance run. Useful. So I've got an alert that it switches on. The sensitivity is standard. So we also got our preferences, we've got the system, and that's basically it. This is your tracker. So if you want the MS Amazon Alexa to work, what you need to do is you go to your smartphone, you actually go into the device that you've got connected, so the MS with BIP5, you find Alexa, you click on it, you log into your Amazon account, and as soon as you do that, you've got the AI assistant basically set up and ready for use. In regards to Bluetooth calls, you can add up to 10 favorite numbers that you can call from your wrist to uh, your favorite numbers or to the people you get in touch with quite often. But anybody who calls you on your smartphone, you can pick up the phone from your wrist and speak into, well, you don't have to speak into the microphone. The watch actually picks up everything into the microphone and you'll hear the other side from this speaker just under the watch. It's actually quite loud, as you heard from the examples with Alexa. So let's click on the button on the right hand side to go back home. If we need to update the face, just tap and hold on the front of the screen and update your faces. This is a nice festive face as well. Oh, only 10% of battery remaining. Well, the battery size here is actually quite good. We do get up to 12 days and that is absolutely true. I did manage to get around 10 days on one single charge here. Of course, now that I am going through the screens in quite a lot of detail, clicking and tapping, well, considering we do get a 1.91 inch LCD display, which is quite sharp for LCD. As you can see, the colors are bright, the blacks are very deep. We get 260 PPI here. So it did spend a bit of battery, but on a full charge, if you just got it on your wrist, it will last up to around nine to 10 days. The, manufac the manufacturer does claim 12, but that's probably going to be very low usage. Now, this watch here does not get always on display, and that is probably a good thing, so you don't waste your battery. You get 120 sport modes on here, which is really useful considering you do get the inbuilt GPS. Now this is a very interesting tracker. It monitors your sleep, three sleep stages, your deep light and REM sleep. I think it's very nice ergonomically. You can see that it's actually curved on top just to follow your wrist. It's a plastic design agreed yet for the 80 to 100 bucks that it's sold on. Well, I actually buy it I actually buy all my trackers on AliExpress and I picked up this one on sale, I think for $84. But if you go to the high street, you will have to splash out about 110 to 120 bucks. But because Amazfit does have a lot of stores in Europe, I got my delivery within five days and paid around, well, 30% less than the high street price. So I will be leaving a link to the listing I got this watch from in the description below the video, so check it out if you're after a sharp price. Now, thank you for watching this comprehensive guided walkthrough, the Amazfit BIP5. I hope you found this tutorial useful, insightful, and this will be your go-to guide when you wanna find out how to use a particular feature with this 
and MassFit VIP5 smartwatch slash tracker. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.